today I'm going to show you how to find missing links when you're presented with similar shapes. So similar shapes, they're essentially the same shape but they're different sizes and they have identical angles. So I can see here I've got two similar triangles because the angles are the same, okay, but this one is larger than this one over here. So I'm going to start by labelling my missing length with a letter. So I'm going to call this unknown X. And when I divide two sides in similar shapes, I find something called a scale factor. Now it doesn't matter which pair of sides you're dividing, you should always get the same scale factor if they're similar shapes, like in this example here. So I'm going to do exactly that and I'm going to be dividing the corresponding sides. So I'm going to start by writing down the unknown, so x, so I'm doing the small base here. And now I need to divide by the corresponding side, so I mean the base but in the large triangle. So I'm going to divide by 12.6. So that would calculate the scale factor okay, of this enlargement, if you like. And so that would be the same if I divide these two sides as well. So I'm going to do the small side 6 over the corresponding side in the big triangle, which is 10.8. So that should give me the same scale factor. So now that I've formed an equation, I can just solve this to find x. So if you're good at solving equations, you've probably already figured out what the next step is. x is currently being divided by 12.6, so we need to do the opposite. So I'm going to multiply by 12.6. Remember to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side, they just cancel, okay, remember when you do the opposite, it just cancels. And on the right hand side, well, you need to put that into your calculator. So type this fraction in, and then you're going to multiply that fraction by 12.6, and it should give you 7, and remember the units are centimetres in this question. So we found the missing base. Just before I go on to the next example, I just want to point something out. Notice how I put the unknown as the numerator. Well, it doesn't actually matter which way round you divide the sides, but it just makes your rearranging, your solving of the equation easier if you remember to put the unknown as the numerator. So that's what I've done here. So because I've put the small side on top, I have to do the same over here. You can't suddenly start dividing the big by the small, it has to be consistent throughout your equation. So I've got the small base over the big base and the small side over the big side when I'm writing that equation. All right, let's do another one. Okay, so here I've got two more similar triangles. I know they're similar because they have the same angles again. This time I'm trying to work out the missing link in the large triangle. So I'm going to start by labelling that with a letter again. So I'm going to call that unknown side Y in this question. So remember, when you're dividing the corresponding sides, you get the same scale factor. So I'm going to be dividing this large side with the corresponding side in the small triangle. The problem is, on this one, it's not so obvious which side corresponds to the other one because not only is this triangle bigger than this one, but it's also been rotated a bit. So I'm going to look at these angles here. The sides, either side of 48 degrees, are the sides I'm going to be using in the big triangle, which means I need the same sides, either side of the 48 degrees, in the small triangle. So these two sides here, which means I won't be using that side over there, the five centimeters, because I don't know this one, so I don't need to use it. So I'm going to start by writing down my unknown, so the letter Y, and I'm going to divide by the side that corresponds to this one. So notice how this big side is in between the angles 48 and 56. So I need to look at the side that's in between those angles on the small triangle. So here, here are my angles, 56 and 48, so I need to divide by this, this side here. So we're doing the big side y divided by its corresponding small side and that is equal to this big side 8.4 corresponding to its small side over here so the only one that's left is 7. 
So just like before, to solve the equation, you need to multiply by the denominator. So I'm going to times both sides of my equation by 6. Remember, this side just cancels where I do the opposite, so I'm left with y. And on the right-hand side, well, I need to put that fraction in the calculator. So 8.4 over 7. And then I need to multiply that whole fraction by 6. So that gives me... 7.2 centimetres. So I found the missing side y. Okay, one more to finish. Okay, so this last question, it looks a little bit confusing because there's only one shape. But if you look carefully, there are actually two similar triangles. See these parallel lines here? Well, that means this angle corresponds to this one, so they're the same, and this angle corresponds to this one, so they're the same. So there are two similar triangles, one here, the small one, and then this large one there. Don't make the mistake in taking this triangle and this shape here, because that's a trapezium, and so they're completely different shapes. So you've got your small triangle and your large one. And I would advise you to redraw those somewhere so it just makes it a little bit clearer when you're doing your working out. Next up, I'm going to label everything I know onto those two diagrams. So if we're looking at the small triangle here, I know these sides three and four, and the base of that triangle is the letter Y, and that's what we're trying to work out in this question. On the big triangle, I've got, well, the base is 10, this side on the left, watch out because you've got to add 3 and 2 together, so that gives me 5. And this length, well we don't know because we don't know that distance there. So I'm going to start the same way as in the previous two questions and I'm going to write down the unknown, so the letter Y. And I'm going to divide by the corresponding side to that base. So I'm doing the small base divided by the big base. Now, we have to put that equal to another pair of corresponding sides being divided. Well, we don't know this length, so I can't use the number 4. So we're focusing on this pair of numbers here. Remember, we've got the small triangle on top. So we're doing the small base over the big base. And we have to do the same with these. We've got the small triangle over the big triangle again. So 3 over 5. And just like before, to solve the equation, you have to multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 10, so that that side cancels, and I'm left with y. I'm going to write that over here. And on the right-hand side, pop that fraction in the calculator, or maybe you know that's equal to 0 0.6. And then you multiply by 10, which gives 6 centimetres. So we've solved this question. Okay, so that's similar shapes when you have to find a missing side using sides. There are other questions that you might have to do if you're doing extended maths or maybe your syllabus includes that anyway and that is finding area and volume or using area and volume to work out sides in similar shapes. So if you need that for your exam, look out for my other videos which are coming up soon. So bye bye from me.